Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Dive Magazine channel, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Uh, right now, there's a GoPro Spring sale on at scuba.com that ends this weekend. So if you want to save $50 on select cameras, accessories, and bundles, uh, but the offer only runs until the 14th, uh, so you don't have much time don't waste any time if you want to get some money off a gopro setup i'll pop links in the description and the one up on this card up here but the main subject of the video today is the valves on your dsmb you typically have two valves on a delayed surface marker buoy a inflation valve and an exhaust valve so that you can add gas to it at depth and any expanding gas can be vented during the buoy's ascent so that it doesn't explode and so that you can of course deflate the buoy at the end of the dive. Now if you're worried that you might damage your buoy trying to disassemble the valves uh, I'm going to do that here in front of you so that you can watch uh, know roughly what you may encounter because they can vary a bit but the basics are pretty similar. If you're worried that they're going to be overly complicated don't worry, uh, they're very simple valves and they are pretty tough. They are made out of plastic, so you can't go too nuts with them, uh, but yeah, they're, they're pretty tough. The exact designs, as I said, can vary a bit, but the general fittings tend to be much the same. But if something's broken on yours, uh, it's usually, especially for the inflate valve, it's usually easier to replace the entire valve than track down the individual component parts. It's a bit easier on the dump valve. They're a bit more universal. They're by no means universal, but they are a bit more universal. Uh, but yeah, let's start with the exhaust valve. Um, that's the one that I tend to play with the most uh, to like wash out and dry out my DSMB. They're much the same as the dump valves on your BCD. Uh, these are just screwed into place. Grab the body of the valve and just unscrew it in an anti-clockwise direction. When it comes to the end, it will probably spring out a bit. It's not that forceful. It's quite a uh, weedy little spring. Um, but yeah, th there's a spring on the inside. Uh, but it should all be attached with this string running through the middle. If your string has broken, and that's why you're pulling it apart, what you can do is you basically need to peel off this like sealing disc out of its cradle and you should see a, a knot. Uh, if it's broken, then um, yeah, you'll just see a hole. Uh, if you're replacing the string, thread that string through that hole, tie a knot on the inside before you pop that seal back into place covering it up. Uh, it, the knot needs to be large enough that obviously it doesn't come through that hole, uh, but not so large that it's going to interrupt the, uh, the actual sealing surface. Then on the other side you have this spring that sits inside the guide uh, on that like cradle that the seal is on uh, with the uh, with the string threading through the center of it and you might find an anti-friction washer um, before the string uh, threads through the main body of the actual dump valve you may not they're not always essential it depends on the uh, the design if you then pull the string the, uh, the entire valve should kind of hold together like this, nice and neatly. And then what you do with the rest of the string is really up to you. Uh, some divers like that kind of dongle on the end, something to grab hold of, which again, just has a knot to keep it in place. Uh, other divers prefer to remove the dongle, which is perfectly fine to do, uh, and then just tie like a simple knot uh, for a more simple pull dump. Replacing the valve, putting it back onto the DSMB is very easy, just the same as your, um, your BCD. After you've washed the inside and, uh, and dried it completely, check the screw threads for anything like grit or sand that may damage the plastic threads. Put some tension on the string and just line up the sealing surface with its counterpart on the buoy. Now, personally, I tend to unscrew the body, uh, which seems counterproductive, uh, but if you unscrew it until it starts clicking, or it clicks at least once, that helps to line up the screw threads. Uh, they're very fine uh, plastic threads. It's very easy to cross the threads of these and damage them, uh, but by unscrewing it and then that click just lets you know that that's the start of a new thread. Once you hear that click, you can then screw it in clockwise, uh, just as normally, and finger tight. Uh, you don't have to bother trying to force it in. Uh, the, there's no benefit of doing that. Just finger tight is as tight as you need to do it. Um, double check for functionality by inflating the buoy and leaving it for like half an hour or something, as long as you can. Uh, if it stays inflated, then the valve isn't leaking. And check that it vents after that. Um, 
but make sure it vents, but then stops venting when you let go. That's all you're really expecting from it. Uh, if you do come back to it and it has like deflated, then it's time to break out the, uh, the leak detectant spray. You just need um, uh, just some detergent, uh, just some dish soap in a uh, spray bottle with some water and uh, just give it a spray over all the seams and anywhere you suspect it might be leaking from. Uh, if you give it a squeeze, anywhere where the bubbles are uh, forming, that's where your leak is and then you can address that. The inflate valve seems more stubborn um, when you first look at it and the internal mechanism can vary. This is the, the tricky part because they are certainly not universal, uh, but the actual fitting, the tube that it goes into does seem to be quite universal. Uh, I'm gonna pull this particular one apart to, uh, to give you a glimpse into what you might expect to see. Um, naturally, you'll probably first want to go for this like screw collar because it's like the only thing that moves and unscrews, uh, but that's more of a locking nut that prevents the, uh, the spring-loaded nozzle from, um, from being pushed in. Uh, it doesn't disassemble it, unfortunately. Um, and the nozzle itself, whilst it will rotate, uh, try to avoid that as it can damage the spring and the seal. Uh, it's not gonna unscrew from there. You're, you're just rotating it and you're just, um, just turning that spring, basically, which isn't gonna do anything. Uh, it's easiest, to remove the entire valve. Uh, they're only pushed into this plastic tube, um, which will soften up if you warm it up with like a hairdryer or uh, give it a soak in some hot water. Plastic gets a bit more malleable, so it makes it a bit easier to pull out. Just like rotate it and pull, and the valve should just pop out from that short hose. The, the short hose itself uh, typically has like a 12 and a half mil internal diameter. Uh, or at least all of mine have that 12 and a half mil internal diameter. They seem to be universal, but nothing in scuba diving is universal. Um, now, when you actually look at the valve itself, this is where it's going to vary. You can disassemble some of these. This one, for example, you can remove this O-ring and then the central stem just pulls through. The valve in your DSMB will probably be some variant of that. Um, I've come across some that I cannot even figure out how they um, disassemble them. I presume they glue them together, uh, but yeah, sometimes you can disassemble them. To get them back in or to replace it with a, a different design, clean the inside of the tube with an earbud or a, a pipe cleaner or something and uh, just push it into place. Uh, you can, again, soften it to make it a bit more pliable and use a small amount of lubricant if you really need to, if you feel like you're struggling to get it back in. Uh, but remember, any lubricant that you use to put it in will make it easier to put it out. So it is best to avoid lubricant if you can. Once it's back in, check for proper function again, uh, or of course do it at the same time as the dump valve, there's no sense in doing it twice. Uh, try to inflate it as normal, and again, it should inflate when you want it to, and then stop uh, whenever you stop trying to inflate it, and of course hold its volume for about half an hour without leaking. It's good to clean your DSMB after each day's diving, uh, just to clean any like salt and microbes out of the buoy. Uh, I wouldn't do it after every single dive, that's a bit excessive, but yeah, after each day's diving, it's definitely worth giving a, a quick once over. I typically remove the dump valve, fill it, or put a certain amount of warm water inside with some kind of detergent. Unless you're diving somewhere particularly grubby, normal dish soap is perfectly fine. If you are diving somewhere, horrible yeah you probably need some kind of disinfectant more like Dettol uh, replace that dump valve give it a good rub to get that detergent into all of the corners uh, to get all of those nasties and then drain some of the water through both the dump valve and the inflate valve as well to make sure that detergent gets into all parts uh, so that the next time you go to orally inflate your boy you don't get a mouthful of something you don't really want in your mouth after you've drained as much of the water out as possible, leave it partially full with the dump valve as the, the lowest point so that any water inside will then drip down to the lowest point and get collected around that dump valve where you can then just purge it uh, before you store it away for your next dive. And that's it really. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video for everybody need to clean or replace their valves on their DSMB. Someone wrote to me the other day that the plastic nozzle had broken off on their DSMB and whilst they did find a metal replacement, they didn't know how to remove the old valve. So I figured I'd just make a video just to show you how to do it. 
Remember, if you want a great deal on a new GoPro from scuba.com this weekend, you can click on this link up here and down in the description uh, and get $50 off certain GoPros and bundles. And if you're watching this after Sunday, the 14th of April, you can still head over to scuba.com. Uh, that deal will have ended, unfortunately, but they have plenty of offers on their equipment all the time. Uh, and you can always head over to our website, scubadivermag.com, and check out our magazine that's available in both print and digital media, depending on which you prefer and of course I always appreciate it uh, when you can subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. My analytics tell me that only 28% of you are subscribed to the channel uh, and I'd like to increase that number this diving season. Uh, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving. Mm -hmm.